Okay. So this is a fairly typical double triangle congruence proof. Double triangle congruence means that in order to prove the statement we want, we're going to have to show that two different pairs of triangles are congruent. So if we take a look at this picture here, we're initially given that AB is congruent to AD, and that BC is congruent to DC. Anytime you're working on a proof, you want to start by marking up your picture. So let's do that. We'll put Gibbons in red. So we know that AB is congruent to AD, and we know that BC is congruent to DC. Now that we have our picture marked up, hopefully you're seeing a pair of triangles that you can say are congruent here. If you look at the large picture, triangle ABC and triangle ADC, you should be able to see that those are congruent triangles. If you're not sure, draw those pictures separately. So give yourself a chance to look at these two triangles separate from the rest of what's going on. Here's ABC and ADC down there. Well, what do we know about these triangles? We know a fair amount already. We know that AB is congruent to AB. We know that BC is congruent to BC. And hopefully right now you're seeing a reflexive step. If you say AC were congruent to AC, reflexive, now you have side, side, side triangle congruence. So this is where we're going to begin this proof. We're going to start by saying those two triangles, ABC and ADC, are congruent by side, side, side. In order to do that, we need to add a step of congruence. AC congruent to AC. Reason is reflexive. And we can now claim triangle ABC congruent to triangle ADC by reason of side, side, side triangle congruence. So at this point, you need to think about what you can do with these two triangles to get what you need in this problem. What they're asking us to find is that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and that BE is congruent to DE. Well, angle 1 and 2 are here, BE and DE there. So you want to think to yourself, what triangles would I like to have congruent? Hopefully, if you look at this picture, you can see that both angle 1 and 2 and segment BE ED are in these two triangles on the left. Triangle ABE and triangle ADE. So in other words, if we knew those two triangles were congruent, we'd be able to say what we want by reason of CPCTC. So let's draw those triangles separate so we can see them without everything else that's going on in the picture. So now we have triangles ABE and ADE on the bottom. Now the trick here is to think about what we have in these triangles that's similar to these. Or not similar, but excuse me, what we have in these triangles that is exactly the same in these triangles. Do they have any sides that are the same? Do they have any angles that are the same? Those are sides and angles that we can use CPCTC to get these triangles congruent. So we begin with what we know. We know already AB congruent to AD. It was given. It's also in these two triangles. So we have AB congruent to AD. Hopefully you see a reflexive step in the middle here. So we'll be able to say AE congruent to AE. That's reflexive. And now we need to think about how we can get those triangles congruent. So what else can you tell me about these two triangles using these congruent triangles? Remember, the idea with double triangle congruence is you show one pair of triangles congruent, and then you use that pair of triangles to get information about another pair. Well, hopefully by now you've seen that they share this side. Right? These angles here are exactly the same angles as these angles here. So you can tell me, since these triangles are congruent, it must be true that angle B, A, C is congruent to angle C, A, D. Why? Well, C, P, C, T, C. In a pair of congruent triangles, these angles are opposite congruent sides. 
BC congruent to BC. So if these angles are congruent here, then it must be true that these angles are congruent here. BAE and DAE. And now we have side, angle, side. So we go back to our proof and we're going to need to step this out. We already have this side AB and AD. It was part of our given. What do we need to add here? Well, we need to add a reflexive step and we need to add these angles which come by way of CPCTC. So we'll do CPCT first, CPCTC first. This way it's grouped together with our triangles being congruent here. So in step four, I'm going to come in here and say angle BAE is congruent to angle DAE by reason of CPCTC, which is corresponding parts of congruent triangles, congruent. That gives me this side, this angle. Now I just need AE congruent to AE. So step five, AE congruent to AE. That is, of course, a reflexive step. And what does that let me do? Now I've taken my original set of triangles that are congruent. I've used this piece of them as information in this other set of triangles. And now I have side, angle, side on these two. So that's what we're going to claim now. That triangle, BAE, is congruent to triangle DAE by side, angle, side. So once we have these little triangles congruent, well, now the world is our oyster. We can pick and choose any pieces of them that we want. All of these corresponding angles are congruent. All of the corresponding sides are congruent. In particular, what are we interested in? Well, angle one congruent to angle two. No problem. Here's angle one. Here's angle two. Since they are clearly opposite congruent sides, they're corresponding parts. That makes them congruent. So step seven here, I can say angle one congruent to angle 2. My reason, CPCTC. And likewise for the other proof, BE congruent to DE, well that's also in these two triangles. BE congruent to DE. By the same reason, CPCTC. Go ahead and put a proof box, you're done. Now normally you wouldn't be asked to prove two things in a proof. I've given you these two because this problem could easily be stated as proof angle one congruent to angle two, or proof BE congruent to DE. The format would be exactly the same. With any double triangle congruence problem, what you're looking to do is start off with the picture, mark up your givens, put down everything that you have. Then you're looking for a pair of triangles that you can get congruent. It doesn't matter what triangles they are. Look for something. Can you get a side, side, side? Can you get a side, angle, side? Is there something that's reflexive, an angle or a side that's in common? Look for those and get something congruent, a pair of triangles. Then you want to look for what you can use in those triangles to get another pair congruent, a pair that will help you to get what you need to prove.